Well, right. good morning, everybody. It's uh, David again. And uh, today I'm with Brother Leo Winnegar. And Leo, you're from Texas. Uh, don't be fooled by his background. He's trying to trick us into believing that, that he's in uh, Yosemite National Park. But he, he's actually in some sun-scorched, terribly hot place in Texas, it, I think. Yes. He's just trying to comfort himself. But this is Leo Winnegar. And Leo wrote me uh, just a just two days ago, I think, or maybe it was yesterday. Yeah. And I was so excited to hear from Leo because, as you all know, um, Mormon Stories uh, is a can of worms. And we've been doing our best to explore the can of worms and expose the can of worms recently. But this was really encouraging to me because a lot of people end up on Mormon stories because they're in faith crises and they get the idea from somewhere. And Mormon stories actually likes to pretend that they help people who are in faith crises when in actually what they do, people come to them with damaged faith and they complete the task of destroying their childlike faith and leading them off the covenant path and convince them that by doing so, they've done them a, a good service okay and to 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 me that's uh that's just terrible uh but uh leo wrote me this letter i'm just going to read this this brief brief uh email from leo hi brother alexander my name's leo and i live in dallas i'm the founder say hi leo just say hi to everybody hi, hi everybody there we go there we go uh, okay <laughs> i'm the founder of uplift community of faith we have a Facebook group and a YouTube channel. I'd love to interview you or be interviewed on your channel. Uplift is a community for Latter-day Saints who are struggling to believe. We're the opposite of Mormon stories. Yay! Yay! Good for you, Leo, and your friends. The, the opposite of Mormon stories. This is like an answer to prayer. My word. Oh, gosh, this is so exciting. We are the opposite of Mormon stories. Our mission is to minister to those who are questioning with a desire to help people stay in the church. I'd love to connect with you soon. Very best, Leo. Well, that is such. And I, I read that, and I jumped on that like ugly on an ape and, and, and uh, communicated immediately with Leo. And we said, well, let's do this. So uh, though I'm much more practiced at completely dominating the verbal discourse and talking nonstop, I'm gonna do my best to just uh, let Leo tell his story and ask short questions and let him pour out his heart about the work he's engaged in so we can all know about it and steer people there who could be helped by Leo and his ministry and his friends. So. All that said, wow. Leo, welcome. Hey, hey, everybody. Uh, I, I'm i excited to be here with you, brother. It's uh, it's an honor, like I said, before we started recording to be to be in your presence. Um, oh, you know, it, it not not flattery, but it's just like a special special soul that you are um, a great follower of the Savior. And it's just it's I feel great love for you already just because. When you watch someone and listen to them long enough, you start to feel connection. So it, I do feel connected with you, Brother Alexander, and and speaking on behalf of many who probably would love to, the chance to meet with you and talk to you and feel your spirit. Uh, many people do love you and appreciate the good that Jesus is able to do through you. As well. Amen. Now that that that's good. It really. That's what we have to say because believe me. You know, <laughs> any good that I'm doing is an absolute miracle of grace and and the Lord Jesus Christ somehow somehow uh, using a, a very earthen vessel <laughs> oh, no, it's, it's one, one thing just I have to start with a little joke here interject with a little yeah, joke yeah, go ahead you're, you're exposing the truth about my situation here Leo people are going to see your um, Yosemite backdrop there and they're going to realize that my supposed living in a van is actually a backdrop photo behind me. Yes. 
Yes, all those who are trying to <laughs> trying to investigate your true background, David, are gonna are gonna question it with a suspicious mind. That's you exactly are, right. It's suspicious minds. That th those supposed those supposed van curtains, <laughs> th those are just a photo on the on the wall of the mansion behind him in in the headquarters of uh, the Latter Day Saint Church, the Mormon Church in Salt Lake. His mansion there. He, he has he has a van backdrop on the wall. Oh man. Okay. Okay. Sorry. I I'm the I'm the king of interjection. So yeah, uh, that's great. Back, well, back to your wonderful community and your ministry here. Tell us yeah. all about it, please. Well, you know, I've been on, on a lot of different videos and podcasts over the years, so I don't need to probably give too much of my background. But but yes, like you said, I am in Dallas. I'm not from Texas. Originally, my wife and I, we met in Provo, and I'm from Utah originally. So, yeah, sure. But, um, but yeah, my, I, I've been married uh, to my wonderful wife, and we have th three kids now. Um, and uh, we were basically happy Latter-day Saints is a good, you know, happy, active family. It wasn't always the case. Um, I, it was a little about, about 10 years ago now, uh, more or less, that I went through a faith crisis. And so um, I spent some time researching mostly the critical point of view. So a lot of, you know, a lot of YouTube, I, I love watch, learning, and, and, and that's why I love your channel, because it's YouTube. But I love uh, I loved uh, learning about church history for the first time. I I really hadn't I was raised in the church, you know, to good LDS family, to good LDS parents, and and I really uh, I really was surprised by a lot of information uh, for the first time um, in my 30s. And uh, this is a pretty typical, I think, experience for a lot of people my age as 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 they've grown up um, with childlike faith, which is great, but not spending a lot of time wrestling with some of the difficult topics that that come up as you study our history, and and you and of course you, Brother Alexander, went through a lot of that study and and, and wrestling before being baptized. Um, but uh, but I was surprised by some information, new information, and it really threw me. And so for a time, I was actually an atheist, a closet atheist, because my foundation uh, uh, in, in God was based on my. Uh, relationship with the church, with the authority of the church, and so my childlike faith was was ruined. And I, I was I entered what the Hafens call in their book, which which is called "Faith Is Not Blind." I entered a stage uh, after simplicity, a, a stage of complexity, and this faith faith stage of complexity, where I wasn't really sure my identity as a child of God was in question, as a priesthood holder. You know, all of the foundations of Joseph Smith and and so on of the church were just uh, were just shattered. And so um, I went through a long period of, of deconstruction, of what it's called, where you deconstruct, tearing down your belief system. And so I went through this, this very, it's called a dark night of the soul. And it was very hard and, and sad time in my life. And I was very alone. I reached out at one point uh, to my stake president for help. And, and my story is out, on, you can find me, my story on LDS Living, but basically uh, it wasn't a great experience, unfortunately, with my stake president. He asked me to just kind of get back with the program and 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 buck up and, and move forward and bore his testimony to me. And it just wasn't enough. I needed more. So I reached out <clears throat> through a it was a miraculous voice that I heard and felt that the spirit spoke to me and said, contact Stephen Harper. Uh, and Stephen Harper, if you don't know, is a church historian. He's at BYU. And he worked on the Saints Project, the big uh, volume of church history that we have. And he's a brilliant historian. I had him at, for a DNC class, Doctrine and Covenants class, at BYU when I attended. And so I, I, uh, I heard this voice say, "Contact Stephen Harper," and I, and I did. I acted in faith, even though I had very little or none at that point. And uh, he helped me. He ministered to me. Uh, responding to my concerns in an, in an email and was very thorough and honest and as brilliant as he once was when I thought, you know, I knew him in my class and I just I had this trust in him. So it, he he encouraged me, the, the what I'm trying to get at here is he encouraged me to re-examine the new cynical assumptions that I was making about Joseph. And if I could share anything with your audience, Brother Alexander, for anybody who is struggling or knows somebody who's struggling, that's the key is to pause on these new cynical 
assumptions that you make about our, our church history figures, people who we once adored and trusted and honored and revered, uh, like Joseph Smith. And, uh, and to hold back this judgment that we can make hasty judgment towards these characters uh, who were real people who struggled. And we can, uh, and I was looking at the data, you know, historical data, the sources and, and listening to, to the, you know, basically Mormon stories type of <laughs> versions of the history, um, you know, where you, they, they, they give you facts, but then they layer this level of cynicism that's uh, and skepticism. On top of May I house. interject here? Yes, go right ahead. This, I'm just going to keep yeah, going. No, I comments. don't. I don't want to interrupt your your yeah, uh, yeah. your story there because what everything you're saying is wonderful, but yeah. I do just want to interject that what you're saying is profound and the heart of the matter. Wow. People find things out, and these this knowledge, so called, because often things are presented as facts that are speculation right okay it's really uh, a bit arrogant for people to think they absolutely know exactly what, what happened with this or that but right. even assuming if they're facts i'm so thankful you brought up stephen harper and him challenging you to re-examine your your cynical or critical some mindset that you'd adopted about these facts because that is the heart of the matter it's actually a spirit it's the accuser of the brethren yes. and our father's good spirit and even just naturally good-hearted people apart from the influence of the holy ghost believe the best <laughs> when in doubt believe the best love bears all things believes all things hopes all things endures all things and and simply in every situation puts the best possible construction uh, uh, on on the situation or on the person involved but but the the influence of the accuser of the brethren is to bring in this spirit that that takes these facts and uses them as the thin end of a wedge to bring a spirit into your heart, which is thinks it's sensible to believe the very worst, even about the very best, which is actually insane. Okay. And of course, the, the accuser of the brethren, he actually is insane in the sense that he he believed the very worst about the very best in the council with the Lord Jesus right. Christ and Holy Father and, and their plan of salvation. And he believed that that he should uh win the day <laughs> you know right he, he believed the very worst about the very best and and that is those are the thing that's the fingerprints of satan's touch mm -hmm. and um but but once people and that that's what i refer to in these videos i've been doing about mormon stories it's it's like swallowing this this yeah. dead stinky rat yeah. do you know so in any case, yes. <laughs> that, that said, what you're saying, this is the heart of the matter. It, yeah. It's not just these supposed facts that people learn. It's, first of all, having a healthy skepticism about whether they're actually facts or not. And second of all, whether they're facts or not, being determined to judge the tree by its fruit and believe the very best about the roots. If the tree's been good and the fruit's been good in the lives of people who trust in it, how much sense does it make to believe the worst about the roots? Right. It, it's, it makes no sense at all. But, but there's, a, there's a spirit involved. This is not just an intellectual exercise. So anyway, yeah. that's, that's my interjection. Now, if, if I haven't completely caused you to lose your train of thought, please continue. Oh. Well, no, I, and, and I, if I do, I apologize to your audience. You know, if I, if I seem scattered, it's, it's because- You don't I, seem scattered, you're marvelous. You're doing absolutely okay, wonderful. Okay. Well, so I, Stephen I, Harper has gotten you to- uh, Re-examine. You, right. you trusted somebody enough to receive wise counsel, to re-examine your, your critical and cynical mindset about Joseph Smith in the light of the things that you'd learned. Right, right. So, yeah, so, um, and just a quick point before I continue, uh, the, the, 
the crazy thing about what people are going through, Brother Alexander, with, with these faith journeys is that the most sweet fruit um, that we once felt tasted great, uh, we, it starts to taste bad to people. Yeah. So, for example, yeah. is just a quick example, the Holy Temple. So I'm excited for when the episode comes out, when Brother Alexander goes through the temple, it's going to be like, you know, 100,000 views. <laughs> But the temple is a holy, beautiful, sacred place. And when you listen to the accusations long enough, I um, mean, you, you, you eat the dead rat. Yeah, the, exactly. The beauty, the beauty and power of the holy temple is just one example. It happens with the scriptures and so on, but with church, with the sacrament, with everything we do, the ritual, that's, the high ritual that is performed inside the temple, the very sacred acts that we do there, those become ugly and bitter. Yeah. And, uh, you know, manipulative, right? So all of these ways that, that I'm not, and I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about Mormon story. I do have one anecdote to, to share about Mormon stories for your audience, because they're going to like this, but it's part of my journey. But um, the ex-Mormon communities, they have found relief, we'll say, from the burden of discipleship, right? The burden of eternal purpose and consequence. Uh, as members of the church, as Christian disciples, we have a burden that's placed upon us as we make covenants, right? There's, it's not a, yeah. it's not a free lunch. You, church takes time, tithing is money and, and a call, you know, callings and everything else. So there is this sense of relief that can come to people um, as they start to exit from the church, you know? And my argument is for most of these people, you know, they've, they claim to be happier. They claim to be, you know, free from the burdens. Um, it's relief. But the deep, resounding peace that comes through the gospel of Jesus Christ, the atonement of having a mediator who takes all the wrongs and makes them right. And that beautiful, the beautiful feet and hands of our Savior who can heal and bless for eternity. And, 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 and not only, like, cover the wounds with, you know, with bandages that we face when we when we go through a faith crisis, it's just like a, we get wounded. Um, he not only covers them, but the the scars are gone. I don't have any more scars from my faith crisis, and I and I was deeply wounded. Um, and so, not a sense of relief from you know this this burden of discipleship, but now I have this sense of deep resounding peace. Um, but um, but I've jumped right to the the. The part where I'm now back in the church and happy, but there is an anecdote I'm going to share about Mormon stories if you want to hear that now or later. <laughs> but it's a good one. It just, hey, let let's hear it. Let's hear it. So I spent part of my a few years. I spent a lot of time um, trying to be in these ex-Mormon communities, um, not necessarily as a as a believer in their ex-Mormonism, you know, as a, an anti-Mormon, but as as I was reconstructing. I wanted to understand these communities so I could, uh, you know, understand what I went through and also understand how to be maybe better, better minister to people who are open. And just so it's a, it's a process of learning, right? You want to learn why people are so upset about the church and would throw away, you know, 40, 50, sometimes years of, of being in the church, um, you know, to leave that behind and exit the church. So I was in Mormon Stories podcast community on Facebook, and it's a large group, large, large community. And I was in the bishopric at the time. <laughs> I was the count. I was the counselor, and uh, it was during the years of there's a guy who's left the church now who who was um he was who was let go from the church. We'll say his name is brother Sam, brother Sam Young. He was a former bishop, and Sam Young, for those who know him, uh, he was very interested for a while about protecting our children uh, when they go in for bishops' interviews. He was worried about a lot of things related to bishops' interviews. And, and he'd shared a bunch of stories from people that had shared um, anonymously or even shared their names about poor experiences with bishop interviews. And I was, I, I was concerned as well. I felt like we could maybe do a little bit better job with maybe having some too deep uh, leadership, adult, you know, trusted adult in the room with the bishop and so on. And I, I was interested in, you know, studying quite a bit about how to be a positive influence in the church, not to be necessarily um, an advocate for change, you know, 
an activist, that sort of thing. I'm not necessarily, I didn't want to be an activist, but I wanted to, I know about, I knew about the history of, you know, for example, um, FSY today was called EFY. And it was started as a kind of a grassroots thing for the for the youth in the church. You know, people got together, started, you know, bringing the youth and, and, and teaching them and stuff. And now it's a church program. So there are some grassroots things that happen in the church that eventually become adopted and sanctioned by the first presidency in the Quorum of the Twelve. So I, I was, uh, anyway, so I was in Mormon Stories podcast community, listening to Sam Young and, and following him. And, and I even called him on the phone a couple of times. And I have this, this long story that I wrote. Someone can, you can be bored to death by reading it. And I, but I had made a comment, a, a post in Mormon Stories. And, and as, as, a, as a believer, uh, reconstructing my belief system. And I said, hey, everybody, my name is Leo. I'm in the bishopric in my ward, and and I'm interested in protecting children. And I am committed. I said I'm committed to always. And this was before the policy was clarified, um, the church policy. But I said I'm committed to inviting, at least inviting a trusted adult, a parent or another trusted adult, to join me in my interviews with the youth, because I was interviewing a youth like uh, at age 12 and up. And everyone was liking my, loving my comp, my post and Mormon stories. And they're like, yeah, 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 Leo, Leo, who are, who are you? This is awesome. And lots of comments. And I was interacting with people and, and not necessarily preaching at all. I was just kind of saying, hell, oh, thanks. And, you know, I'm looking forward to trying to do a, a good job to protecting our kids and our, my ward. And they're like, you're doing great. And, and then it started to turn dark. There were a couple of people that started to accuse me of, of having ulterior, or, ulterior motives um, in the group and kind of being a spy, basically. And they reached out to the admins and behind my back, I didn't know this was happening. And the next thing I knew, my, I couldn't get into the group. I was banned. I was banned from Mormon Yeah, stuff. exactly. <laughs> and they didn't tell that, me that, why or anything. So, well, th that's very similar to uh, what I experienced at the ex-Mormons message board oh. on Reddit. <laughs> you might have, I think you watched that video, Suspicious Minds, yes, ex-Mormon yes. Suspicious Minds. I go on there and there's this whole thread of conversation about, is is he like an employee of the church or is he even really who he says he is and all this stuff, all this speculation and, and accusation. And I just went down and just gave simple, honest answers to the whole thing and left my contact information so anybody who wanted to could contact me directly. And I go back a couple of days later and every one of my comments had been deleted. Yeah. yeah. And, but all the questions and accusations were still there, but, but they, they couldn't handle the fact that somebody actually answered and was, was, was uh, with, with no ulterior motive, just saying, Oh, here I am. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? It, it, it doesn't, it's not useful to the evil one. What, what you were, the input you were giving doesn't help the the atmosphere of us and them and these are evil people that we've finally been set free from that is the essential message that the evil one is working deep into people's souls uh that, that somebody's actually there uh sincere and real and god forbid even still filled with the holy ghost that that's just really uncomfortable <laughs> yeah. to have such people around because these people sadly they've been touched by that spirit of the accuser and he is a, a liar and the father of lies he's been a liar from the beginning and the spirit of truth is simply not welcome in in the in the uh, environment that he has created in 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 things like mormon stories or or in the in the social group of of a group of ex-mormons in a particular area or whatever they and but that you know like i'm sure you've experienced people can realize that wow i used to be happy i'm not happy anymore what happened and and be open hopefully be open to the kind of um honest helpful input that you received from Stephen Harper yeah because, yeah. because really it people give in to mistrust 
of that which is most trustworthy on the earth, even though it's very faulty and human, it's still the true church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, its leaders, the sincere souls that are on the covenant path. This is the most trustworthy thing on the whole planet. But people swallow whole a spirit of cynicism and mistrust and accusation to yeah. call that light darkness. And um, the only path back is they have to find, they have to try in the midst of that to trust somebody enough to actually listen to what they have to say and reconsider their ways. Is, would you say that's accurate or? Yeah, reconsidering for sure. It's, it, there needs to be some kind of pause, you know? Yeah. And, and to be open to uh, faithful answers, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and some people, you know, I, I know some ex-Mormons, you know, I, that I love dearly. And I know that many of them have wrestled and have given it, they would say, a very good shot, right? And they sure. and they've they've definitely tried to find faithful answers and and haven't found them. Um, yeah. And so my heart goes out to you folks, anybody who's hearing, who's here to spy on Leo. Uh, <laughs> Uh, still, that's okay. Um, but I, I just, I, my, my empathy is there. I mean, it's not an easy thing to lose your faith at all. I, I experienced that, and it was tremendously painful. So, um, I, my heart goes out to people who are struggling and and who have struggled. And um, as far as like happiness goes, you know, I, I, I kind of, I want to say I hear you, brother Alexander. But there is this happiness that comes from someone who gets the relief. Of no longer being a disciple, it's it's sure. it, is, it is a relief of this burden of having you know because we take his yoke upon us Matthew eleven twenty eight through thirty, yeah. and there he doesn't say he eliminates the burden. He says my burden is light, and that's yeah. relatively light compared yeah. to uh, the the world and, and what we end up facing in the world. So, but when people leave the church and they exit the church and and lose their belief. There is this relief from no, long, no longer having to go to church, no longer having to pay tithing. And I understand that, 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 that feeling of relief. But again, that's not the deep feelings of peace and joy that come through Jesus right. Christ, through the atonement. Exactly. So that, that's better. No, I don't deny it. It's, it's like um, there is like, like the, the path of discipleship. The Lord Jesus Christ, in one of one of the Gospels, says, he says the way is narrow and difficult that leads to life. Right. And the the Greek words there, actually, uh, one of the meanings of them is compacted under pressure. It's almost like you're you're in a birth canal or something. It's like there's a pressure involved, right. and it's a healthy Defining. pressure yeah. that's designed to transform us from people yeah. that are filled with self in countless ways to people who are filled with selfless love. But that, you know, there's, I can't remember exactly where it is, but somewhere in the Bible, it says, if a man aspires to serve the Lord, prepare yourself for a fiery ordeal. <laughs> right. You know, right. It, it's like, like the Lord Jesus Christ, he describes discipleship. Uh, he says, if any man would be my disciple, he must deny his very self and pick up his cross, pick up this instrument of oh, torture yeah. and follow after me daily. So yeah. Yeah. it's, it's like the life of a disciple is a life of self-denial and uh, much suffering that, that if I say this as, as someone who spent nine years of my life as a very committed hedonist, uh, if it feels good, do it. If it doesn't feel good, run as fast as you can away from it. Right. Man, after nine years of that, I, I was in utter despair, man, yeah. because yeah. if you're yeah. pursuing, if you're trying to avoid pain <laughs> and pursue pleasure in a fallen world, that works for a while. But what do you do when what's fun isn't fun anymore? Then where do you go? You know, so. The law of diminishing. I mean, it, it says specifically in the Bible that there is pleasure in sin for a season. And of, of course, it's easier and more fun a lot of the time to right. not deny yourself 
to deny yourself. <laughs> but right. like you say, there's no joy there. And there's certainly the transformation into the image and likeness of God, you know, and attaining to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Well, forget that. That's not happening apart from a life of suffering and self-denial. No way is that going to happen, man. You will be transformed, but in the wrong direction. And uh, yeah. so, but these are all things, you know, for sure. Yeah. And I say this as somebody who has experienced this kind of thing. When you do cast off restraint, um, it's a relief, you yeah. know? Right. It's a relief. At, exactly. It's a relief at first, for sure. Yeah. Hey, it, I could just watch football and drink beer all Sunday. No worries. <laughs> yeah. <it's, laughs> you know, especially, only, te yeah. especially in Texas, man, you fit in way better. If you can drink beer and watch football on Sundays, yeah. then if you can't, you know, just <laughs> just right. so, have, go over to your go over to your your friends and uh, eat some barbecue and and chips and drink beer and watch football all Sunday long. Forget this church stuff. Yeah, you know no, exactly that, and that's the message you know that <clears throat> that we can hear from a lot of former members, former believers. Is you know I'm happier. I'm, yeah. I'm relieved. I, you know, and so they describe all these great feelings and of relief and, and of happiness and of finding themselves and being able to have time for themselves and for their families on Sundays and whatnot. And so, yeah, I, I understand that. And I was, I was going that way for a long yeah. time for, for a couple of years. And, uh, and so, but gratefully I found, I started studying a lot of evangelical stuff uh, as part of my reconstruction. And I discovered grace and uh, Brad Wilcox has got a great talk on at BYU. He did for anybody who hasn't watched grace go or watch it again. If you haven't watched in a while, but there's a great talk about grace from brother Brad Wilcox and, um, and studying grace has been a, a huge balm for me. Um, uh, it's been a beautiful thing to realize that my life is just grace. I mean, my every breath I take is a gift of grace. My gift of agency. It's a gift. The gift of grace, uh, the gift of the atonement, the gift of grace, um, the gift of eternal life, if it may come for me and my family, is a gift of grace. And so I'm, I'm, uh, and and Mosiah talks about King Benjamin talks about uh, our nothingness, right? That we are nothing uh, without the grace of the Savior, and uh, it's true. Like without Him, there really is no, there really is nothing. So I'm grateful for Him and and for His redemption. So I. I've been redeemed. Um, I guess you could take a second time. I, I wasn't rebaptized. I didn't have. To, I didn't actually leave the church officially, but I've had some some rebaptism moments where I've been I've been able to connect again with my Savior. Beautiful moments of peace. But as a as a natural born skeptic, you know, it's been difficult over the years. I've had to fight waves of doubt that have come in, um, and uh, so my heart goes. But my heart goes out to people in the audience who have a loved one who's struggling, I, my, my goodness, it's hard to be in a mixed faith marriage, a mixed faith family, have parents that leave or a child that leaves, it's so difficult. And, and so my heart goes out to each of you who are listening, who have struggled, who are struggling, it's difficult, so. Amen. Hey, can I ask you, um, do you think, it seems to me as somebody, you know, the Latter-day Saints is basically brand new to me. I mean, I just, actually interacted yeah with Latter day saints in a serious way for the first time last december 24th okay right. so you all this is like brand new yeah. <laughs> and i and i'm absolutely in love with you all but it does seem to me like a fair number and i i hope this isn't i don't mean to offend anybody and i might be totally wrong okay it seems like a fair number of Latter-day Saints, they grow up in their faith. And it's a very deep thing and a very cultural thing, but they're baptized at eight and don't necessarily experience in a way that actually has the effect that this is supposed to have. They don't necessarily experience a repentance 
and the rebirth that comes from a genuine repentance. Hmm. And so they end up, if you don't, if you don't experience like the Lord Jesus Christ, like when Nicodemus came to him, he said, look, unless you're born again, you can't even see the kingdom of God. Yeah. And then Nicodemus is like, well, what's that all about? How can a man enter into his mother's womb and, and be born again? And, uh, and the Lord Jesus Christ, he repeats it. He says, look, I tell you the truth, unless you're born of water and of the spirit, you by no means can inherit the kingdom of God. You yeah. can't enter the kingdom of God. And, and, uh, So baptism is supposed to bring about essentially being born again, right? Being born of water and of the spirit. You you're baptized for the remission of your sins and you, re you receive the, the gift of the Holy ghost. And, and then you have essentially the, the, like you say, you have that experience of grace where you're now able to gradually learn to, to live your life, not by your own efforts, but by the power of the Holy ghost leading you and empowering you to walk on the covenant path you're not trying to walk on it by just trying to be good and keep the rules but yeah. it does seem to me like there's there's some latter-day saints that even though they were raised in in this deeply wonderful uh cultural latter-day saint faith that they end up trying to walk on the covenant path in their own power and basically feel like they're constantly failing and can never do good enough mm. and, and live with a certain sense of failure and condemnation in pretty much an ongoing way. And they're not really experiencing the power of the grace of God in a significant way. And I say all this just to say, you know, I mean, I could just be totally wrong and I, if I'm totally wrong and this is offensive to anybody, I just really apologize. Yeah. But it was, do you think that there's some, do you think that that have you seen that to some extent yourself? So, so yeah. So you're talking about the level of conversion. Um, yeah. Maybe how that corresponds with how people exit the church and there, and then we've done, a, you know, I'll make a, I'll give a plug now for our group. It's called uplift community of faith is what it's called. Right. Yeah. A Facebook group, and it's all for free. We we are all we're all volunteers. There's nothing in it for me. No, nothing right. financial. Okay. Wonderful. <laughs> but we've done some survey work in our group, and there seems to be a correlation between how all in someone was and how converted they were, um, with how uh, cheated and deceived they feel when they learn information that wasn't presented to them, you know, earlier on in life, maybe, and they weren't able to wrestle through that information, church history or other cultural things that they've discovered, um, you know, current policies in the church and whatnot. So there's some people that have been very committed and very converted, I would say a true faith. Um, and I, I've interacted with hundreds of these people over the years. Um, and I was actually one myself. So yep. I was very, okay. I had some incredibly profound experiences on my mission and after my mission and so on. And and so my my deconversion, my what's called the deconstruction process, where I start to rationalize and and study my way out of the church, um, that was setting me up to become a very strong uh, reverse evangelizer. So evangelize yeah. people out of the church, right? To be a it, it local, anti Mormon, yeah, local, yeah, former member, right? And because I'm a vocal person, I I want to speak out in favor of good and think things. And so you have people, for example, well, you know, I well, I don't, I don't want to name names, but there are some very prominent vocal former believers that are on the internet, and they, they were probably some of the most all-in people. I, I would say they were probably some of the best and brightest saints, right? Just faithful, strong, and true. And so when they, they finally started to learn things that they were surprised by, that were shocking to them that shook their faith, um, that drives them to help to people, pull people out of the church. And they feel like they're doing a good job, a good thing, because right. he is as a cult, as he is as manipulative, as controlling, and so on. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, there's definitely people that leave for, you know, like a cultural reason, something that's very pretty simple. They were kind of never really converted. 
And those people tend to just kind of fade away. They don't, they just kind of, COVID came up and people stopped attending, you know, say, hey, I'm not going to go to church anymore. I wasn't really feeling it anyway. Um, and those people don't really come out and fight against the church. They're just kind of like, right. you know, it's, it's, you know, I'm just going to take a, a, a new, it's a new stage of life. I'm not going to go back to church and, and no, no harm, you know, but the people right. who devoted their lives to this thing, who were, you know, committed tithing payers, um, who went on missions for two years and so on, they feel cheated. And so they're going right. to, they're going to spend a lot of their time and energy and resources uh, to try to share what they consider the new good news, the truth about Mormonism. So there's that, that kind of the range of people that I, I, I deal with in our group and um, not necessarily in our group, but we talk about people that come in that are trying to vocally pull people out of the church. They're not really welcome in our group. It's, it's not for those people that are committed to non-belief. We're open, we're, we're an open space, a, a safe space for people who are still open to exploring the yeah. challenging issues. <laughs> so, so, so yeah. if you can explain to me the means by which you offer people help and support that yes. are struggling with their faith, it's incredible and wonderful that you have a place where people can come to have deeply questioning conversations, even if they're upset or their faith is almost gone. Right. But, but they wish it wasn't that they're, they're welcome yeah. and supported and, and given input that if they can manage to trust and grab a hold of it, they can find their way back. That's it. That's incredible. That's absolutely incredible. And so needed. How do these yeah. people interface with you? So you, you have a, a YouTube channel and does that have like videos on it? Similar kind of like the real Latter-day Saint stories, <laughs> as opposed to the, the, the negative, we want to pull you all the way out Mormon stories. So do you have videos like that? Yeah. Yes, we do. We you can search for us on just Google Uplift Community of Faith and and you'll find our YouTube channel. Um, we you know we don't have a lot of views on our videos and that's okay. We and our group is only for a little over four thousand members and so we're not up to the two hundred plus thousand of ex Mormon Reddit yet. <laughs> so, that's for, what do you mean? That's that's incredible. Four thousand members. Uh, it's it's good small, for you. Yes, that is so wonderful. <laughs> That it's is so much. wonderful. Uh, and you, you know yeah. what? <laughs> I mean, what you're doing needs to be shouted from the housetops. This is marvelous. It's oh. absolutely marvelous. I, I, Thank you. I, I'm just giving you some <laughs> input. I, I'm not bashful. Uh, sure, sure, go ahead. <laughs> Uplift open. community of faith sounds like some evangelical church or something, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, have you considered calling yourselves latter-day saint stories <laughs> <laughs> whoa that's a good that's a, that's I a think brand thing. because yeah. mormon <laughs> stories is huge yeah but obviously they're, they're not interested in following the direction of our prophet or they wouldn't be called mormon stories you, you know a, a a version of that that is the opposite of them that is trying to get people to return to a place of of trust and the covenant path, I I think you'd probably get a lot more views, and what you're doing would take off if you changed the name of your channel to Latter Day Saint Stories. We could put that in subscript, maybe is is our yeah. you know our secondary purpose. But so I'll tell you a little insider. It, this is a whole new world for you, Brother Alexander, for many in your audience. But when someone's going through a faith crisis, there is a lot of shame and self-loathing and loneliness and 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 fear, right? Of of what yeah. of what that's going to happen and who's going to know and and what am I what is my spouse going to know and what are what are my parents going to say and, and my neighbor, you know, my neighbor's a Mormon. So what? So so uplift is a is a place of uh, almost kind of like a place of neutrality, right? We're kind of like a third party, so we're not priesthood leaders. Like, ideally, you're going to be you're going to be receiving some good counsel from your local bishop, your state president, from your spouse, from your parents, and so on. Uh, people who are still in the church who can 
help you to, you know, uh, Steve Harper, you know, go to a professor right. at BYU. So ideally you can go to people in your own life, you know, but sometimes people feel so ashamed and, <clears throat> and just worried about the outcome, what's going to happen. Excuse me. <laughs> um, so we're trying to provide a, a neutral place. It's, it's an interfaith place. So we're saying if you're, you're kind of on the edge, or even if you're not a member of the church, come and, and explore these, to these topics in, a, in an open-hearted, open-minded way. Um, and and there's are, there are some reasonable answers to your many questions about the church. And so, you know, I, I, I would like to present the, the, the idea that we're the antithesis, a, a true, there's opposition in all things. We are the opposition, but I'm, I'm mostly saying for against, you know, as an, we're, I'll, I'll say well this, we're, we're all, all, an alternative to Mormon stories, okay? Right. We're not, not, we're not, we're peacemakers. We're just saying, here's an option. See if you feel happier, lighter, more peace, more direction in your life by joining our group. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's, I think that's the model that President Nelson and the other leaders of the church have set for us. They're not, they're not, a, you know, fighting, uh, you know, necessarily accusing, we're not accusing the accusers. We are offering what we call gentle, uh, uh, and a gentle uh, pastoral approach to uh, a faith journey or a faith transition. Wonderful. So, yeah. That's just great. That's, That's just great. <laughs> you, your, your mission in that sense is a bit different than, than um, what I'm doing in the sense that what inspired me, uh, well, after I'm done interviewing you, you're going to interview me. So maybe I'll just save that. I'll just save that for the next one. Sure, but sure. Uh, <laughs> that is just that that is just wonderful. So are, are you able via video call or telephone to offer people like yes just honest conversation, counseling services, not, not that you're doing it professionally or maybe you are. I don't know. I know Mormon Stories offers people, I guess you call it exit counseling and charges them a couple hundred dollars an hour, but yes, right. It, how do people get because uh, seriously i think this is a big part of the problem it's very easy in in churches and i don't think that the latter-day saints as amazing as they are as amazing as we are <laughs> we're not immune to this i think it's a real problem that that crops up is um yeah is is trying to maintain appearances and and uh being judged and rejected if you if you uh question the program in any way shape or form um so people feel like they can't be honest and then then they uh you just end up pretending and you can pretend right until you're gone you know but it's a miserable business it's like people need to uh be able to have honest struggles and get genuine honest help mm -hmm. empowered by the holy ghost that isn't suspicious but right. trusting and trusting enough and powerful enough to not be threatened by somebody that's being touched by unbelief you know yeah. right. we, but i think often people find uh, find it hard to find that kind of uh honest conversation uh yeah. when they're struggling and that's really sad. So, so we're we're trying to work ourselves out of a job in Uplift. Uh, that's how we say it. Is our, our little admin team. We we would love to to the, be uh, to a point as a church where every bishop, every stake president, every parent who has someone who comes to them saying I can't I don't believe anymore, that they can react in a sensible, uh, patient, kind, uh, but knowledgeable way. You know, informed, right. informed way, because right. uh, you know, basically gone be the days that we can just bear a testimony to someone who says, "Hey, I'm doubting." We we just can't do that anymore. It's we've learned that, you know, that's what happened to me personally. So I take this kind of I'm I'm a serious proponent of this approach. Is is we talk we talk about walking hand in hand with the person uh, through their faith journey, so their faith transition walking hand in hand, learning together, uh, studying things together, 
being open to discussing and to, and to involving God, if you can, in the process of study. Um, so instead of just throwing, you know, we've got a YouTube channel, we've, we, we've got information that we can just send to people, but our approach really is a, a true pastoral approach where, yeah, call me. I talk to people all the time, like uh, as often as I can, like a couple people or so on average a week I talk to, um, who I say, hey, just give me a call, let's talk and share with me your, your challenges. We'll talk through a couple of approaches, a couple ideas of things, way to maybe reframe the historical information that's challenging you. And so in our team of people we have, that we're all volunteers and we're not getting paid. So uh, we're happy to help. We're not professionals, but we have been doing this for a few, since 2017. Oh, so we, we're, we're excited you've to help. Doing thing, you've been doing it for six years. You might as well be professionals. The only thing that makes you unprofessional at this point is that you're not charging people. Yeah, we don't charge anything. But it's obviously, if you've been doing this for six years, you know what you're doing. So we're, we're trying that to provide is, that a, is just an alternative. Absolutely, that's absolutely marvelous. Is is there any way, like like if you're happy for people to call you, how do they find your phone number? Yeah, just people can email me. My name is Leo. Hello, hello again. Leo Winnegar is my, my email address. L-E-O-W-I-N-E-G-A-R at gmail.com so it's like vinegar but with a w okay so okay. Leo vinegar l-e-o w-i-n-e-g-a-r at gmail.com so people yes, anybody please. that's uh, struggling through a faith crisis or wants to uh, know somebody who is wants to get some advice or help they can email you and uh, you'll uh, you'll respond hook them up either help them yourself or hook them up with someone who can yeah yeah i Hey, like you're doing, yeah. You're doing Heavenly Father's work, Leo. Well, that's I mean, amazing. I, I I just want people to know that they're not they're not stuck. You know, like yeah, you're not stuck. Yeah. And, and if you have a spouse or a child or someone else who's struggling, you're still a believer. You know, I'd love to meet with people like that too. So, and then yeah. we have a whole group of people that just love doing that, just talking to people about their their challenges, and we're we're open. You know, um, yeah. So if people That's start wonderful. to accuse, accuse a lot, then we kind of start to say, well, it probably sounds like you're, you've decided and you've, you've, you're, you're, con you're committed to your non-belief. And at that point, we just say, we wish you well, you know, but if yeah. people are still open to faithful yeah. answers, please, yeah, please reach out. Yeah, it's like that. That's really the key. It's, it, you know. It's like if somebody can say, well, well, this is this is really how I find myself thinking. This is what comes to me is uh, like this fellow wrote wrote to me the other day. He put a comment. He was like, I think his name was Sam. And he's like, you know, I just realized the leaders, you know, that that they lied about this or that. And if they lied about one thing, they'll lie about anything. And right. basically, he just judged them as being a bunch of liars. Um, and and it's like if if a person has that in their heart if if they're open say well maybe maybe i'm judging too hastily or if if a person if a person can question themselves at all i i guess i guess being a bit humble is key man if somebody has just a little bit of humility um then 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 you can help them but once somebody is like just hair, teeth, and eyeballs into accusing, and every time they open their mouth, what comes out is an accusation that they voice with absolute certainty. Um, I don't even want to talk to somebody like that. Do you know? Yeah. Well, I, I, mean, I, 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 I'm, I'm a sponge. So for people who are in that state of mind, they just want to call and yell at me. That does happen. Uh, and I, yeah. And I, and I just express love and say, you know what, I, that pain that you're feeling, that anger towards this institution, you know, the church, I, and to God or whatever it is you're feeling. I, I mean, I, I just want to hear people. Um, so it, you know, and maybe that, that, maybe that's enough to, for you to be able to listen to me, maybe afterwards. I don't know. <laughs> uh, you know, that's that's a good point. I mean, it it is uh, maybe it is even if somebody wants to pour out their unbelief and their accusation and their bitterness 
if you just let them get it all out and you just listen to them honestly, yeah, maybe then they can hear something. So it, if you have the, the strength to do that and the faith to do that, that is a good thing to do because, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, pressure it, builds, it does, pressure it builds up inside people. Yes. And it, it does wear on you, you know, like it's not easy to, I, I've had, you know, some very concerned people, um, berate me and the church for you know for a couple a couple conversations i can remember that went on for more than an hour of just of just yelling and uh really mad yeah you know that pain that they feel i might i have a deep feeling of empathy for people who are in so much pain and just it's just so hard you know to go through that so so if that's where people are at and they're watching this and they say well i'd like to yell at leo then then sure, you send me an email and I'll and I'll listen to you. But if if you want to if you want to talk and have a conversation about the difficult aspects of church history or current events in the church, I I'm happy to have that conversation with anybody. So that's wonderful. Yeah. That is that is absolutely wonderful, Leo. <clears throat> yeah. And, and I'm especially thankful because now I can steer those people to you. <laughs> Go to Leo. Yeah. Go Leo. Well. Well done, Leo. Sick, sick, sick the dogs onto me. <laughs> yeah. No. no. <laughs> the dead rats. So I, I think we, we all need to do our part to yeah. um, to bear with hurting people yeah. and as much as possible, give them a listening ear. But at some point, especially this is especially true, I've received much communication from people who have loved ones. Yes who have fallen away you know their daughter their best friend their spouse who regard themselves on a holy mission to set their mother sister spouse free from mm -hmm. the the evil cult and every time they come over every time the person's around them they're very focused on trying to, to tear down Yes. The, the faithful members faith yeah and of yeah. course at some point at some point there's a reason why the lord jesus christ he specifically said throughout the gospels he said look do not think i came to bring peace on the earth and this is the prince of peace talking this is the greatest peacemaker of all time and he says don't think i came to bring peace i tell you no but division and a man's foes will be those of his own household you know he says, I've come to set, you know, mother against daughter-in-law, you know, father against son. And he says, you know, he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves father and mother more than me is not worthy in me, of me. And he who does not pick up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who loves his life will lose it. And he who loses his life for my sake will find it. And so at some point, if people are just hammering at you, determined to destroy your faith you just have to say look you know i don't want to hear it yeah yeah you, know? sure. you really uh, you really can't come over and try to destroy the most precious thing that i have which is my childlike faith and testimony of the truth you know right, <laughs> you, you have to right. like lay the law down i think and and even say you know like the lord jesus christ at one point said to his disciples he said look you do not know what spirit you're of in another place he said to peter he said get thee behind me satan you're an offense to me yeah, yeah. so i i mean i'm not like advocating that people jump on that bandwagon easily but boy the the behavior of some of these ex-members in trying to destroy the faith of those that they left behind on the covenant path is shockingly bad yeah, no, it, it's it's definitely a, a difficult thing. Uh, so the best therapists out there will talk about setting boundaries with your with your loved ones, right? Boundaries are a healthy yeah. thing. Yeah. So if you yeah, if you, you have to set not, boundaries. Exactly. So boundaries are for those who don't believe in the church or believe in God. Our plea for you, uh, for people who are listening to this, for ex Mormons who who feel like it's their duty to to share the, their, you know, the newfound truth being awoken by this new truth that they see. Um, just realize that we do have, we do have some things that we still cherish and value. 
as members of the church. And, and so one of the things I invite members of the church to do with their loved ones who have left or who, who are leaving the church is to talk about, um, to share with the person this idea of what's called ch uh, charitable exchange. So this, this is the concept that I'll end with uh, here is, is charitable exchange. So for example, if you have a spouse who no longer believes, it's good for the, the, the believing spouse to ask the non-believing spouse, say, hey, what are some of the things that you, now that you no longer believe, what are the some of the things that you really cherish and value in your life? The things that you feel are, are beautiful and, and good in your life. And, and then listen to that person, the non-believer, and say, okay, thank you for sharing that. Um, uh, I, I'm willing to not tear down <laughs> those things that you cherish and value. Um, and just express that love to that person. Say, I'm not going to tear you down on the things that you really cherish and value. And if that person loves you back, they should get the, the little hint. Right. And maybe, and maybe ask you and say, well, what are some of the things that you cherish and value as a believer? Do you still believe? Well, I cherish and value my temple covenants. Could you please not tear those things down? <laughs> You know. I'm in. See, this is marvelous. This this is a this is a um, this is a wonderful lesson in how to deal with a very difficult situation. Yeah, it reminds me of what what Paul said in Ephesians four. He said, "Look, let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth, but only that which is good for building others up according to their needs." Mm -hmm. And, and so that, that's kind of like a good ground rule, I think, for these people who have loved ones. Say, look, this, this, is, this is the ground rule. If we're going to be together as loved ones, this is how we show that we love one another. Yeah. We let no corrupt communication come out of our mouth, but only that which is good for building others up according to our needs. And uh, can we agree on that? And, you know, <laughs> that, that's such a reasonable request. Yeah. I think it would be pretty tough for a person if they really do love you. Right. To, to, uh, to, to uh, yeah. Yeah. To, to toss that request in the bin as if it was something unreasonable, I think would be pretty hard for a sincere person to do, regardless of whether they believe in the Latter day Saints or not. Yeah. And all the while learning together. So, yeah. That's what we, that's what we promote is say, well, for your non-believing friend or family member, say, uh, "Let's let's study, let's study one of the, the the issues that you have." And say, "I don't want to get a long list in a letter from from you, uh, you know." Or like, there's ex Mormons who will write in a Book of Mormon in the hotel on the front page and say, "Don't read this. Uh, go to this website instead." <laughs> yeah. Go to this right. website and learn the truth about Mormonism. And so, you know, we're we're suggesting in our in our community that there's a higher way to build relationships and to to set boundaries and to build on common ground. Right. That, that's what yeah. we want. We want to build bridges and not tear each other down. And and if you're a dedicated non-believer, we can have a very beautiful, happy relationship. Uh, that's what I want. And that's what we as Latter Day Saints want. We don't want to. We're not going to kick you out. Uh, we want you in our lives and we want to feel that connection and maybe connect in ways that we haven't in the past. Maybe, maybe we can't go to the temple anymore. Maybe we can't serve uh, in our callings in church together as a, you know, as a couple. Uh, maybe you stay home from church and I'll take the kids. Um, but let's try to respect and honor the most cherished values that each of us have in our lives. Um, and that's, that's wonderful. Now, really can I ask you just a very simple question? Yes. One thing I've noticed is that um, it seems like people that have left or people that uh, don't believe in the restoration um, find it impossible to call us the Church of Jesus Christ. It, it, they, they basically can't let those words come out of their mouth. Right. Uh, they have to call us Mormons and refer to our faith as Mormonism. Uh, do you find that that's the case? 
Yes, yes. Uh, you know, I think that's why President Nelson's inspired. Yeah. Uh, he, I think he, he sensed that 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 name, the more more good, is what President Hinckley talked about and promoted Mormon is being okay to use. And so, President, the 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 landscape has changed, and we have Mormon stories. We have um, people calling us the Mormon Church. It's a derogatory uh, term. Um, is a disrespectful term, right? So, you know, I don't know if it's necessarily they can't, you know, speak the name of Jesus Christ anymore. Some of them, I'm sure, can't. They don't feel comfortable saying that word, and they actually will use pejoratives on the internet. Uh, I've seen a lot of people call Jesus a lot of different ugly names, uh, you know, just dumb things because they don't want to say the name of Jesus Christ. Even, uh, even for example, people as warm and fuzzy as uh, i'm going to touch a sacred cow here as uh, pastor jeff mccullough of hello saints you'll notice he mostly refers to us as mormons and mormonism and sometimes as latter-day saints but you i have never once and of course now that i say this he will do it one or a few times just to prove me wrong <laughs> But he he has he can't let come out of his mouth calling us the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints. He just can't do it, even though that's the name of our church. Yeah. And basically, if you resp truly respect someone, you call them by their name. You know, <laughs> they say if you ask me what's your name, and I say my name's David, and you call me Fred, <laughs> there's something yeah. wrong there. You know, but uh, yeah, it's, it's 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 interesting what what a uh, revealing thing that can be whether or not somebody's just willing to call you call your church the name of your church <laughs> yeah you know it's, it's deeply hypocritical for those who are you know would say strong liberals uh, yeah ideology uh, and they're very much in favor of referring people to their chosen identity chosen labels right right and my identity as a latter-day saint as a member of the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints that's sacred to me and important to me. I value that. And so for people to knowingly continue to call me a member of the Mormon church or a Mormon or that I, I'm part of Mormonism or call me an occult, it's just, it's so hypocritical. Well, they're just sticking, they're sticking their finger in your eye in a way that, um, horrible. that isn't really, um, that they, they feel like they can get away with. And of course they feel like yeah. they can get away with it because they do get away with it all day long. Oh, yeah. But yeah. but they, it is essentially a poke in the eye. That That's what it is. Yeah. But this, is. Is, this has been wonderful. I am so, and now I, you're, you're going to send me this video. I'm going to put it up. And I, of course, I'm going to need a link to your YouTube channel, a link to your sure. Facebook page, sure. anything you can give me, you know, email address, phone number, because I, I, I'm essentially going to beg all the people that subscribed to my, and I'm also going to send out a message to all the subscribers from the community section of my channel uh, to please come and not just come themselves, but to, to take note and bookmark all your information. So whenever they know of somebody that's struggling, they can steer them in your direction because I think it's really true. This this fellow Sam, he he said when he was going through his faith crisis, he really couldn't find anybody to have an honest conversation with, right. and you know, I don't doubt that that's true. It, it can be very hard in right. a uh, in a faith community when you've come to a place where you're really questioning people's fundamental beliefs. Right. Uh, to find somebody who will, will really uh, help you. So we're, neutral, we're a neutral party. Yeah. A shoulder to cry on is a stranger. Well, you're you're neutral, but you're not neutral. Right. Your, your hope we're is more neutral, your hope is if people okay. are willing to be helped, that you can help them recover their childlike faith and get back on the covenant path. Yes. Is that is that accurate or not? Yes, we're we're neutral plus. Like we definitely are believers and we love yeah. the church. And yeah. we are going to gently encourage you to yeah. find ways to reconcile your concerns. And yeah, and so for if sure, you could find a way to help yeah. people rebuild their faith, that but but of course, 
as, as faithful Latter-day Saints, the last thing you're going to do is try to manipulate somebody or violate their agency in any way. You're yeah. going to just be a friend and, yeah. and uh, try to help them in any way you can. Is so that we're, we're 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 trying. We're just trying right now to. When I say neutral, I, I mean, like, there's no judgment because we're not your spouse. We're not your mom or dad or your child or your bishop. You know, I, I, I'm, I can become a friend over time, but we're meeting in a place where there's obviously some pain and some discomfort um, in your life due to the, you know, due to your lack of belief. And that comes from this, what's called cognitive dissonance that people struggle with. We're like, my life is not in harmony with what I, what I now value. You know, I, I'm going right. to go to a, a church where I don't believe anything that they're saying. So that's a really difficult place to be. And so when I say neutral, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to judge you. I've been there. It's See, that's wonderful. That's absolutely wonderful because uh, people, that are, people that are in a faith crisis, you know, they need a safe space. And it sounds like you're a safe space for them. Where they can where they can find some real friendship, and honest conversation, and help to whatever extent they want help, uh, to maybe understand what they're going through, from people who are not set on tearing down what might remain of the faith that they had. So, there, good for are, you. There, there are. I'll just say this too, brother Alexander. Is you guys? There are faithful, reasonable answers. Okay. Yeah, reasonable. Well, I mean, that's been that's been my experience. All all of this stuff that people fall away from, logic. Most of it, most of it. I mean, I don't want to be unsympathetic, but most of it, it's it's just why would you throw away something so precious over something like that? I, to me, and, but of course, having been there, you, you have, you have more sympathy than I I've do, seen that. but, yeah, I've seen but that. for me, for me, having found the most beautiful thing on earth after 47 years of being blind to it and going through agonizing crisis after crisis after crisis, because I hadn't found the city that has foundations it sometimes can be hard for me to be sympathetic to people who um, willingly discard it. Yeah. So, you know, I, you've really, you've really helped me to see deeper into this and to have more understanding of people that are going through a faith crisis like that. And I thank you very much for that. Yeah. Happy to share. Okay. <laughs> Wonderful. You want to, you want to close us with a prayer? Yes. Uh, uh, you want to pray together uh, publicly on our video? On our video. Let's pray on our video. You okay. can just say a prayer, and I'll agree with you. Just uh, just be simple, man. It can be you know ten okay. words. I don't. You and know. Then, and then and then if you want to play play me a song on your guitar. Okay. Good. <laughs> There's an exchange. Let me play first. I'll play first, and okay, then, okay. then. Yeah. Hallelujah. You guys, I'm getting, I'm getting a private, <laughs> private. Well, eventually everyone's going to see this, but this is a private concert for me. Yes, I love it. This is a song I wrote 47 years ago. Okay, okay, Leo, think of four things that you're thankful for. I'm thankful like for just my... one word thing, like friends, my yeah. wife, salvation, forgiveness. Okay, you got four things in okay. your mind. So Jesus. Okay, you my... don't have, don't tell me. Just just oh. you can you can write them down if you want. Okay, okay, I won't tell you. All right. Okay, right. don't tell me because I'm going to sing the first verse and I'm going to come up with the first four things and then we're going to sing it again and you're going to come up with the second four things. Okay. We've got so much to be thankful for we got so much to be thankful for we've got so much to be thankful for we've got so much to be thankful for 
We've got the atonement to be thankful for. We've got our prophet to be thankful for. We've got the covenant path to be thankful for. We've got eternal life to be thankful for. We've got so much, 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 so much to be thankful for. We've got so much, 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 so much to be thankful for. We've got we've got Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, to be thankful for, and we've got sacrifice, sacrifice, to be thankful for, and we've got families, families, to be thankful for, and we've got David, David, to be thankful for. We've got so much, 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 so much to be thankful for. Sing it. We've got so much, 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 so much to be thankful for. And we've got Leo to be thankful for. We've got the uplift community of faith to be thankful for. We've got that we can help our friends to be thankful for. And we've got forgiveness to be thankful for. We've got so much, 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 so much to be thankful for. We've got so much, 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 so much to be thankful for. Yay! Yay! Happy people! Yay! Yes, yes. joyful. There you go. That's right. That's it. That's right. You man. know, I just wanna, I just wanna end with one thing. That was fun. One little, one little quick thing. Uh, I'll never forget this one fella. Uh, he posted a comment after I did one of these videos about people that had fallen away and were trying to get me to fall away. <laughs> You need to investigate the roots of what you're involved in, this kind of thing. And he was like, you know, all this stuff was being thrown at me. And, you know, really, it's like, I, I really, I lost my faith. And I was about to take my family and resign my membership. And then I was like, ah, my family and I, we've been as happy as we could possibly be. What am I doing? Yeah. He said, I don't even care if that stuff is true. I I want to just be with the happy people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he recovered his faith and, and it, because basically he realized that the fruit of joy that he simple joy and faith that he and his family had was evidence that all these accusations that he was receiving and the cynical unbelieving spirit that he was receiving that the roots of the church are dark and evil couldn't be true because the fruit that he and his family had experienced until he started listening to this stuff was glorious mm -hmm. and you know yeah. this this is a, this is a fundamental thing that i just hope anybody who watches this video that's in the same place that this man was in of kind of being halfway out you know and having lost their joy and peace over these accusations that the roots of the tree are dark. This, this man just woke up and he's like, oh, I'm just so thankful. I realized that I was abandoning the happy people to be one, one of, not that, you know, like you say, people can have a form of happiness, but it's not the same, man. No, no. no. It, joy, joy isn't found out there in the world. It isn't. So anyway, no, no, yes. enough said. Amen. Okay, say a prayer, Leo. Hey, yeah. we're having fun. We're having fun here. We're, 
like, like I usually do, we're, we're going on way longer than we thought we would, but that's all right. We're rejoicing. We're yeah. rejoicing. Yeah. Yes. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Say a prayer for us and we'll, yeah, we'll do it. Here. Dear Father in heaven, we are so grateful uh, as we've just sung together. So thankful for all of these beautiful moments that we just shared together. And we pray for each other, dear Father, and for all those who watch this, that they can feel uh, enveloped in your loving arms. Please bless those who are struggling and who have heavy hearts and need comfort. And please bless those who need courage to reach out and to receive help. And we pray for these things with great love and great joy in the gospel. We're so grateful for all of it. And say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And also, Heavenly Father, we just want to pray for Elder Holland and President Nelson and Kara Lee and uh, Michelle's father, that you would touch them and strengthen them, body, soul, and spirit, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. That was awesome. great. <laughs> that was fun. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody.